Hello, welcome to Andrew Lavery Show, where we talk about investing in the stock market and where we talk about using the stock market to build wealth so we can all become self-made millionaires. Now, once a month, in addition to all the videos that I do here on this channel, uh, once a month I do like to go over my portfolio and just update everyone on changes I made from one month to the next, how much I'm making in dividends, what dividend changes you know occurred, whether it was an increase, decrease, you know what have you. So I like to go over all that, and this is my monthly portfolio update. Before we move on, I want to encourage everyone to hit that like button, hit subscribe button, and notification bell. I post new videos all the time. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this is my portfolio here. I, I use E-Trades. This is the logging into my E-Trade account. I have five positions, as you can see. I think uh, I no no changes in the positions from from uh, last month. So I still have shares in Broadcom, Hormel, Magellan Midstream Partners, Realty Income, and Alpine Income Property Trust. So you can see all the. Uh, numbers of shares for each position I have here some numbers to highlight my total gain so far I started this portfolio I want to say November of 2019 either November or December of 2019 and uh, so far I have I my whole portfolio is up one thousand thirty one dollars and eighty four cents right here however I did lose seventy seven dollars today but eh, it, you win some you lose some right but overall I'm up one thousand thirty one dollars or six point one seven percent compare that to last month where I was down, my overall portfolio was down $42.40 or negative 0.26%. So big change from uh, from mid-July to now with regards to the, just the total uh, gain of my portfolio. So uh, go ahead and pause the video if you want to take a longer look at everything that I have here. But I am going to move on to my Excel spreadsheet and show you the dividend income that I got rolling in. So uh, some numbers to highlight here. Uh, my total yearly dividend income, so in one given year as of right now, assuming no changes in the uh, in the dividends, you know, no increases, no decreases, I didn't, I don't buy any more shares of anything. One year, I will get seven hundred ninety-six dollars and eighty-two cents. Compare that to last month when my yearly dividend income was seven hundred fifty-six dollars and forty-six cents. Um, last month's dividend yield was 4.68 percent right now it is 4.75 percent so it did go up a little bit uh, this 796 dollars you could break it down monthly for 66 dollars and 40 cents weekly 15 and some change and daily two dollars 18 cents and then hourly as in an eight hour work day um, i'm getting 27 cents an hour so i'm very very proud of myself now, dollars invested, which is this is the total I have invested right here, sixteen thousand seven sixty-seven. That this also includes reinvested dividends too, by the way, not just my money from my paycheck that I'm investing in, but also reinvested dividends. So you can see here how the dollars invested are broken up, and then my dividend income, this seven hundred ninety-six dollars. What, uh, how much each each position is supplying in dividend income you know, um, in terms of a percentage. So uh, as of right now. There is no method to my madness in terms of how my portfolio is broken up percentage-wise, neither neither with the income, dividend income. At some point, <clears throat> excuse me, at some point I will have my, my dollars invested uh, split up 20% each, roughly 20% each for each position. But I, I'm, I'm 40 right now. I plan on retiring no later than 65. So let's assume I do retire at 65. I have 25 years to balance this portfolio out, so I'm not too concerned about um, with the way it, it currently sits right now, I'll balance it out. It'll just take me a little while, so no rush to get there. All uh, right, let's see here. Earnings so far. So my dividend earnings um, so far to date, I have collected $399.40. All of last year, scroll up just a little bit here. So all of last year, I collected $362.80, and that was a 239% almost 240% gain from 2020. So, but uh, last year was $362.80 total that I collected in dividends. So far for this year, I'm just shy of $400 and I still have four months to go, as you can see here with regards to collecting dividends. So I'll be well above what I collected last year. Um, so I'm expecting another big percentage gain, uh, 200 plus percent percentage gain over last year. Uh, so, so far, this is what I got for dividend income. Let me see here. Monthly changes. No changes to dividends at all. Uh, dividends have stayed the same. So, I do expect uh, there are, I think it's maybe two or three of the companies that are in my portfolio typically increase their dividends in fourth quarter of every year. So, 
assuming they'll still stick to that schedule. Some increase their dividends in the first quarter of every year. So end of this year, beginning of next year, I should be seeing some increases in dividends. Now, changes to the portfolio, uh, just a couple of buys. So I bought four shares of Magellan Midstream Partners for $52.13 and then 22 shares of Alpine for $18.46. Now, Alpine is a company I probably will load up on here, at least in the near future, considerably. Alpine, if you're not familiar with them, they're a real estate investment trust, a very small real estate investment trust, about 130-ish properties. Last I remember, um, I can't remember the exact number, about 130 or so properties in their portfolio. When I started investing in them, they were under 100. Every three months when they've been reporting their quarterly numbers, their portfolio grows, their AFFO or adjusted funds from operation, that's a very important number for real estate investment trusts. If you're, if you're tracking a, a real estate investment trust, AFFO is an important number to uh, keep track of. So is the funds from operation, but adjusted funds from operation, in my opinion, is uh, is more important than FFO. So AFFO is going up every quarter. Their dividends will more likely will increase at the end of this year. I have, I have no doubt that they'll increase their dividend again. But they're a very young company. They only started in 2019. So I want to say the total market cap on them is around 220-ish million dollars. Now compare that to Alpine, not Alpine, excuse me, uh, Realty Income. Big, big real estate investment trusts. They are a multi-billion dollar company. They have over 11,000 properties, 11,400-ish properties. They were started back in 1969. So much, much bigger. So it definitely gives you a good comparison in size there. So Alpine is a very small company. And I feel like that I'm really getting in on the ground floor with them. Uh, I, I value the company per share around $23 a share. So I'm getting them for around 18, about 18.50. $18 or so per share. So I think it's I think it's a bargain in terms of what I'm paying per share for the company. Uh, right now, I think it's on a great track. They're, they're building their portfolio out and uh, kind of um, honing in their portfolio in something very similar to realty income, where it's just focusing on the single tenant commercial properties. That's what the main focus of realty income, and that's what Alpine really is focusing on as well. So um, I really like that approach, and I think Alpine has a, a bright future ahead of them so far. Uh, obviously, mistakes could be made, so you got to keep an eye on them. If they make the mistakes and you, know, you feel like you need to sell, then you, you sell your shares and get out and move on to something else. But um, as of right now, I think they're doing fantastic. So I really feel like I'm getting in on the ground floor. They are a very, very small, small cap. I don't think they're a micro cap, but definitely at least a small cap company. And buying in so early into them, 20, 25, 30 years down the road, those shares and the dividends could be substantial, I, I feel. So I'm really going to just load up on Alpine from now until, gosh, I don't know, for a while. So my portfolio is probably, you know, in terms of dollars invested, the portfolio is going to be probably pretty skewed towards Alpine. Um, you know, I'll buy some, maybe a Formel, Mid Magellan, Midstream Partners here and there, but, you know, Broadcom, a couple shares here and there. But I'm really, I think I'm really going to be focusing on Alpine in the near future. So that's about all the changes I have. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Any questions, leave those down below for me in the comments. I hope this is inspiring to people. My portfolio is nothing massive. It's nothing impressive, right? It's not multi-million dollar. I'm not some hedge fund guy or some former Wall Street guy. You know, I'm just you know an everyday person building a portfolio and will be retiring on my dividends when I, uh, what, you know, 20, 25 years from now or so when I retire. I plan on having enough in dividend income to supplement my income dollar for dollar and my wife's income dollar for dollar, just completely replace it dollar for dollar when we retire. So that way we can maintain our lifestyle and we'll be self-made millionaires at that point because I fully suspect the shares will be worth well over a million dollars, you know, all the shares combined. So we'll be self-made millionaires living off our dividend income, going on vacations and maintaining our lifestyle as it currently is. And we like our lifestyle. So uh, we're not we're not too upset about that. So, yeah, like I said, I'm not some big hedge, tree, hedge fund guy, but I, I hope this is inspiring to people that, you know, you don't need a ton of money to get started in the stock market. Just what do, you, what do you got in your pocket right now? You got $20, $40, $60? Go find some company that's worth $20, $40, $60. A good, well-managed company that's worth that much. If you're finding a company that's worth more than what you got in your pocket, save a few more pennies and then go buy a share when you got enough money to, to go buy a share. But make sure you do your analysis and do your homework and research on a company before you invest. 
If you don't know how to pick good companies to invest in, down below in the description are links to my more recent stock analysis videos where I show you how I analyze a company, what websites I go to, what numbers, percentages I'm looking for, and all that. So check those videos out down below if you feel like you need some help. But again, like I said, I hope this is inspiring. Remember, hit that like button, hit subscribe button, and notification bell. I post new videos all the time. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.